Diamond P Sports presents championship drag racing from the National Hot Rod Association. The 24th Annual U.S. National. Brought to you by English Leather Toiletries for Men. Ask for English Leather at fine toiletry counters everywhere. And by Champion Spark Plugs. For better performance, change your plugs at least once a year with a fresh set of Champions. You can't buy a better plug. And by Pennzoil, the Ascor motor oil in the familiar yellow can. Remember, when your car is worth caring for, Pennzoil is worth asking for. The U.S. Nationals, the name itself stands for the largest drag racing event in the world. 24 years have elapsed since the first Nationals was staged on an airport runway in Great Bend, Kansas. Since then, the Nationals has developed a tradition which encompasses much more than close racing, a panorama of color and excitement that ranks the Nationals with any major sporting event. The festival atmosphere prevails everywhere, and there's nothing like a pretty girl to help this massive crowd show its appreciation. Hello everybody, I'm Dave McClelland and welcome to the Nationals. Joining me here today is Steve Evans, who can tell us just how big this event really is. Steve? Dave, the magnitude of this 24-year-old U.S. Nationals is just awesome. Over a thousand participants, over $400,000 in cash awards, a 200-acre racing facility, 1,000 workers, about $15 million pumped into the Hoosier economy, and I mean there's not a motel room for 75 miles. 100,000 people are ready, I'm certainly ready, for the finals of the granddaddy of all drag races, the U.S. Nationals. We'll be back with racing from the Nationals in just a moment. A lot of stories have developed at the U.S. Nationals through four full days of qualifying. The crowd's attention has been focused on a two-time national champion. Gary Beck of El Toro, California, won this event in 1972 and 1973. Here in 78, he debuted a brand new look in top fuel racing. This is his new car. Let's compare it with his old car. Look at the wing placement. Look at the engine placement. Look at the driver placement, the general configuration of the body. Now compare this with the 1978 version. Notice how low the wing sits above the rear wheels. The engine placement itself much further out from the rear end. The configuration of the body designed to slip through the air a little better. A windscreen designed to protect Beck himself from the blast of air at over 230 miles an hour. In the first round of racing, Gary met up against the defending champion, Dennis Baca. Side by side, you see the difference between the two cars. Baca's car, very similar to Beck's old car. And in the first round, it's Gary Beck winning it at 6.09 seconds. His speed, 233 miles an hour. Gary had a lot of trouble making this program, qualifying on his final qualifying attempt yesterday. In slow motion, you can see even better the difference between the cars. Look how much lower Beck's car sits than Bacchus. And it seems to pay off as in the middle of the course, he pulls away from the defending champion. Let's go now to Steve Evans. Beck's pretty hot, it looks like on Gary Beck's cars. There was no shoot and the car stopped amazingly well considering there's no parachute at all a 609 wins it for gary beck in round number one and he told us yesterday he was a pressure player did you have to just lean all over it gary well we found some uh, things wrong uh right at the last minute we had to put a new wire harness on the car and we started back up there in the last second and it sounded a lot better we just hope that we found it that's true maybe we can race this car yet you never know well, Gary tried, but he didn't get any better, as in round number two racing, he faced Rob Bruins. Bruins in the far lane, again with a conventional-style car. 
And Gary's car, the best he could muster in round number two was a 624, while Rob Ruin streaked to a 588, defeating Gary Beck in round number two. Also in round number two, we found Frank Bradley, former Winter Nationals champion, up against the low qualifier, Dave Uhara. Uhara recorded a 5.84 second elapsed time in qualifying. Relative unknown on the national event trail. Very, very strong in West Coast racing. He won this race handily as Frank Bradley went into a wheel stand at the start, losing by virtue of a red light. But Uhara had a 5.91 second elapsed time. Showed that he certainly has the power that he displayed in qualifying. Ran 238 miles an hour. This is round number two racing. The wheel stand by Bradley costing him the race in the red light. Let's go again to Steve Evans. You know, you have a reputation on the West Coast for being very, very sharp on the Christmas tree. Do you plan to, to shave it close, or do you think you got enough performance propelling you here to, well, to not gamble? You always got to shave them close because everybody is tough here. So we're going to have to keep it the same every time. All eyes were on the starting line for this second round race. The world champion, Shirley Muldowney, was matched against her former crew chief, Connie Kalita. That's right, the man that had prepared the car that carried Shirley to the world championship decided early this season to go racing on his own. And they were matched against each other in the second round of racing at the Nationals. As we saw they were going to run each other, we asked them how they felt about it. I raced a couple weeks ago and I gave her two driving lessons, two of them, one right after the other. It's just another race, Jason. He's just another racer up there, and he better have his act together. Well, they're on the starting line. Shirley Muldowney in the near lane. Connie Kalita in the far lane. A close race. And there it was, Shirley Muldowney defeating her former crew chief. 5.97 seconds her elapsed time. Her speed, 240 miles an hour. In slow motion, you can see they left the starting line together. At the middle of the course, they were still side by side. But at the finish line, Shirley prevailed by just a few feet. Connie running a 6.01 second elapsed time, very respectable. Shirley quite happy heading back to the pits to get her car ready for round number three, along with a number of other racers. Richard Tharp, the driver for Candies and Hughes out of Homa, Louisiana. Jeb Allen, winner of the recent Summer Nationals Championship. Kelly Brown, the man that can lock up the World Championship at this event. Young Rob Bruins, recording some fine, outstanding elapsed times. Larry Dixon, a former Winter Nationals champ from California. And the low qualifier at the Nationals, Dave Yorahara. Round number three, top fuel eliminator, Jeb Allen on a burnout. The burnout, unique to drag racing, designed to heat up the tires. Let's watch it again in slow motion as Jeb Allen, with some 2,000 horsepower at his command, lets the clutch out, drops the hammer on the accelerator pedal, the tires growing in height and literally burning themselves. Heating up the tires to get as much traction as possible, and he will need it against this man, Kelly Brown, winner of four national championships thus far in 1978. Reset, Drake, and Brown, they call themselves the other guys. Jeb Allen in the near lane, Kelly Brown in the far lane. Side by side, they leave the starting line. And the motor going away on Kelly Brown's car, and Jeb Allen, his hand in the air, waving to the camera. He takes the win. 5.99 seconds, defeating Kelly Brown. But by virtue of his two previous round wins, Kelly Brown has won the world championship for 1978. He wanted to win this race, but it wasn't his day. The motor going away at that point for Kelly Brown. Here we see Kelly taking off running, and he's going down to congratulate Jeb Allen. Let's go to Steve. Kelly Brown, well, your Nationals hopes are ended, but uh, the pressure is off. You've won the World Championship. Enough points earned here. It's going to be a big number one in your car next year. Yeah, well, I'm very disappointed because, uh, obviously, this was the race to win for us at the moment, but uh, World Championship means a tremendous amount, and uh, 
We'll keep going. It won't get us down now, you know. Looks like you burned up a motor on that I blaster. Think we did. I think we did, yeah. It, uh, it was very close, about a thousand feet, and it just fell down right there. And, uh, 